Welcome folks to my very first video review. For those of you that are in the know, you'll know that uh, I have quite a few written reviews up on Board Game Geek, but this will be my first video review. So I hope you're as excited as I am. So today, what we're looking at is a game called Dr. Esker's Notebook. Now, this is a game, and I'll read you the back. Dr. Esker has vanished, leaving behind only a mysterious book full of puzzles written in his own hand. Are you up to the challenge? And so, ostensibly, what this game is, is a deck of cards. And this deck of cards, each one rec uh, represents a page in this perhaps crazy doctor's notebook. And you're working through a series of nine different puzzles, trying to figure out just what has happened to Dr. Esker. Now, let's just do a quick uh, unboxing to kind of get an idea of what is in this, uh, this deck. So, very nice and simple deck of cards here. And so first we have the uh, information about the game, what it's called, and so on. On the back, it has a lovely QR code and a website to go for hints, uh, if and uh, more probably when you do get stuck and need some clues. It has your uh, basic game instructions, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, how the game works. And of course, uh, how you set the game up. Down at the bottom, you have your various um, solutions. Um, we'll talk about those again. And up here represents how you put out the cards of the different puzzle. It has your basic method for solving the puzzle at the end. And a quick start, which again is just some of the basic clues and information that you need to actually play the game. And we have just another reminder of uh, where you can find your hints. And then on the back, again, just some more basic information that you'll need in order to solve uh, any given puzzle. And then you have your Hall of Champions card. And this is just a place for you to record uh, who all played and uh, how long it took you to actually solve all nine puzzles and how many hints that you may have used. And it's set up to where you can do that two different times. And after that, whoops, you have uh, 10 solution cards. And what these are is on the one side, the reverse side, it has uh, various images and letters and words. And on the back, it just has solution zero through solution nine. And I will go ahead and set those out. So as you can see, you have your 10 solution cards set out. And for the vast majority of the game, they stay there. The only time you ever look at them, touch them, is when you think you have solved your puzzle. Then after that, we have all of the puzzle cards. And you'll see each different puzzle is notated by a different image on the back of the card. And obviously, start is the very first one you do. It has an hourglass on it. And we have some with uh, letters on the back, uh, one with some maps, uh, a picture, and so on and so forth. Each set of cards denotates a different puzzle that you're trying to work your way through. Now, the first one, uh, as we've already seen, is the hourglass. So I will go ahead and lay those out because this cannot be a spoiler because it is, as I said, the very first one that you do. And so what you have is for this particular puzzle, just three cards. And on each card, I'll pull it a little closer so you can see. As you can see, it looks like it's been pulled out of a notebook. It has various words on there. Sorry, May, a curved dotted line, a three, a four, and a pointing finger, as well as a skeleton with a crown and an hourglass. The second one, again, another hourglass. Replays, another hourglass, more curved dotted line, the 12, and this last one, uh, again, we have more curved out of the line, a seven to six, some more random letters, another pointing hand, and then watch it, buddy. Don't get your spices mixed up. Are you missing one? Which really looks like the scribblings of, well, a middle school boy, to be honest, is what that looks like. But we'll go with it as a uh, genius doctor's handwriting. Now, what you're going to do in the game is you're going to look at those cards and do your best to figure out how all the information that you have there leads you to a two, three, or four single digit answer. 
And whatever that answer that you come up with is, you will then flip the cards and the solution rows. So for example, let's say you came to the conclusion that the answer was zero, one, two. So I would take my zero, I would flip that, my one, I would flip that, and my two, I would flip that. Okay, And then you look at your solution, and if you have come up with the right solution in the right order, the card will clearly tell you what the next puzzle that you are supposed to move on to is. As you can see, I just picked the first three, and it does not tell us what we're supposed to move on to. Now, I'm not going to do any more of the puzzle here because I don't want to spoil anything. But what I will say is that every single thing on the cards, the puzzle cards, is a clue. Now, I happen to solve this one, and I also took it into the school that I teach at with my two classes of sixth graders and uh, introduced them to it as a prize today at school for uh, good behavior. And uh, they were also able to solve it with varying levels of hints uh, being required, but they each needed different hints and different pieces of information off of these cards in order to solve it. The solution cards will clearly tell you what the next puzzle that you move on to is. And so to figure that out, you then you go and you look at these other cards and it would say move on to the letters or move on to the, uh, the maps or whatever it may be. So each progressive puzzle is more difficult than the prior one, both in complexity of information on the cards as well as a number of cards in the puzzle. For example, the letter here has one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Um, we have the uh, map here, which, my goodness, has a whole bunch of cards in it. Um, Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, the fourteen cards, and so on and so forth. And that is the entire game. That is all you need to know to be able to play. And now, what do I like about this game? The first thing I like is I am really into the theme of this game. I think they've done a very good job with the art. And it's very simple, it's very clean, but it does look to me like it's being pulled out of this crazy person's notebook. And that lines right in with the theme as that's written on the back of the box. And I find myself very curious to know what did happen to Dr. Esker. And I'm really hoping that when I do finally solve the last puzzle, I will actually get to find out. Uh, I like that this game is not easy. Even the tutorial the first puzzle here that you can see right now, it wasn't easy. It took me a little while to really adjust my brain into what I was seeing, to figure out how on earth these random images and numbers could possibly lead me to these solutions down here. I also am very impressed with how quickly the difficulty ramps up. Um, I have already had to use uh, some of the clues so far, and I'm sure as I get further and further in, I'll have to use more and more. I also am a big fan that this game really excels with more and more people. It's a perfectly fine and fun solo game, and I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that would just breeze right through this, but uh, I am not one of them. I'm very excited to play this with four and five people. I think that'll just be a fantastic, nice, easy, fun game. Uh, this game is extremely accessible. Um, it only costs fifteen dollars. You can get it on Amazon or uh, directly from uh, directly from uh, planktongames.com. Um, as I said, for about fifteen dollars, it's very small. It's very easy to to travel with, and you can pretty much set it up anywhere. As you can see, it's a pretty small footprint I have right now. But I could very easily just have these cards in a stack, and I could play this on an uh, airplane tray if I wanted to. Um, I think that is just fantastic. The one thing that kind of left me wanting more were the rules. Um, I showed you early on uh, what the rules are, and it is just this one quick card that tells you what you're doing as well as the other shows you how to set it up. And then there's a reminder later that it's two to four digits and so on. 
Um, I will admit that when I first put this out, I looked at this information and I did not know what the heck I was supposed to do. I did have to go and get a hint very early on. And once I got that, I said, oh, that's what I'm doing with these cards. Now I understand, now I can play, now I'm having a good time. And I have to say that the only thing that I don't like about this game is that it does not have any replay value. Once you've solved it, that's it, it's done, you know it. Um, when you're done, give it to somebody else, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. Um, it's not especially a bad thing that it's a game that's like this. After all, it is only a $15 game, and there are certainly plenty of games out there like that. I'm thinking of all the different escape room games. So the question is, should you get this game? And I think the answer is, if you are someone that enjoys puzzles, that enjoys thinking in different ways, that enjoys playing games that are, at least in my experience, unique, then this is absolutely a great game to get for you. It's a light, it's a simple game, it's not something that you're going to be spending hours and hours and hours over, but all in all, I think it's a good time, a good purchase, and I definitely, definitely recommend it. Thank you all so much for joining me on my first video review. Uh, if you have comments on things I could have done better, please let me know. Leave them in the comments down below. I will put a link to the website if you are interested in purchasing a copy of Dr. Esker's notebook, uh, also in the description. And all in all, uh, if you enjoyed seeing this, I will be having more previews, more reviews coming out over the next coming weeks. So uh, you can subscribe and that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you all again, and have a good day.